Welcome to the Cairns Botanic Gardens Flecker Garden Audio Tour. The tour is marked by red numbered signs featuring the audio tour icon. These match the locations marked on the audio tour map. When you arrive at a numbered location, press play on your audio device for information on what you are looking at. Each section ends with the sound of a croaking frog. When you hear the frog, pause the audio and make your way to the next location. When you arrive, restart the audio from where you left off. Now make your way to the starting location for the tour. It is marked A1 on the audio tour map and is just outside the Flecker Garden's main gate. When you arrive, restart the audio. From a small seed of an idea, a great garden was grown. The history of the gardens began in 1888 when explorer and botanist Eugene Fitzalan asked the Cairns Municipal Council for permission to set up an ornamental garden and nursery here on what was a reserve. The council agreed, as long as it remained a public garden. In the 1930s, the North Queensland Naturalist Club, led by Dr Hugo Flecker, lobbied council to establish a formal botanical garden within the reserve. This was successful, and council even added a small zoo, which survived for a couple of decades. In 1966, Vince Winkle took over as curator of parks, gardens and reserves and set about designing and building what is now Flecker Garden. Many of the trees that you see here were planted at this time. In 1971, the gardens were named Flecker Botanic Gardens to commemorate Dr Flecker's contribution to botany and the gardens. Today, the Cairns Botanic Gardens include Centenary Lakes, Rainforest Boardwalk, Fitzalan Garden, Tanks Art Centre and Mount Whitfield. The gate you are standing under is a recent addition, donated by the Friends of the Gardens, whose volunteer work contributes to the promotion and maintenance of what you see before you. There is enough here to keep you coming back, so enjoy your walk today and choose a different trail when you return. The Munro Martin Fern House the fernery houses some of the stranger plants that can be found at the Flecker Garden, along with a couple of celebrities. Aroids are a large family of easily recognisable plants. Their flowers are not as you might expect. They are arranged on a straight, column-like growth that is called a spadix, which is usually partially enclosed in a bract, which is a modified leaf called a spathe. Our celebrities are two aroids called Amorphophallus titanum. They have a spadix that can reach three metres in height, making it the largest unbranched flower structure on earth. These extraordinary flowers produce a rancid, fetid odour that attracts just the right pollinators, flies. Our celebrity aroids are extremely difficult to coax into flower, but both have done so recently. Take a few moments to enjoy the diversity of ferns before heading out. Some are related to ancient plants that existed here millions of years ago, well before dinosaurs or even flowering plants did. <coughs> the George Watkins Orchid House The orchid family is the largest of the plant families, with an estimated 30,000 species dispersed through almost all regions on the planet. In the orchid house, only flowering specimens are displayed and are replaced as soon as the floral display concludes. But you might find Queensland's floral emblem, the Cooktown orchid. This popular purple flower is an epiphyte, which means it grows attached to trees. Many orchids are epiphytes, and you will see several in the gardens and along the boardwalk. If you look above you, you will see pitcher plants or monkey cups. These interesting climbers live in wet, nutrient-poor soils where they supplement their diet with insects that they trap and digest in their pitchers. <coughs> the Bromeliad Garden Bromeliads are a relatively small but diverse group of plants that originated in tropical America. Like the orchids, most are epiphytes. The best known and most widely grown bromeliad is the pineapple. The Tillandsias are a subgroup of the bromeliads, often called air plants. Look closely at the logs in front of you. There are different species attached, and they appear to live on air alone. 
They actually collect moisture and nutrients from the surrounding atmosphere using special leaf structures. If you look at the bromeliads growing on the ground, you will see that they trap water in the base of their leaves. Like the Tillandsias, these plants do not take up water or nutrients with their roots. It enters the plant through the leaves. The Foxtail Palms Although the Foxtail Palm was well known to the local Aboriginal people, it wasn't botanically identified until 1981. Until that time, it had been mistaken for another North Queensland palm with a similar appearance, the Black Palm. The Foxtail Palm occurs naturally at Cape Melville, a remote area of Queensland 475 kilometres north of Cairns. It grows amongst granite boulders in harsh coastal conditions. When first introduced to the commercial market, it was very popular and individual seeds commanded high prices. However, due to its ability to thrive in a wide variety of climates and produce large volumes of viable seed, its value dropped. Today, the foxtail palm can be found throughout the world, which is remarkable considering its short time in the industry. It is a marketing success story. The Aboriginal Garden and African Sausage Tree The Aboriginal Plant Use Garden exhibits native plants that local rainforest Aboriginal people depended upon for survival. There is a leaflet here to help you identify the various plants. Make your way to the sausage tree. This tropical African native produces sausage-shaped fruit that are hugely popular with baboons, elephants, giraffes and hippopotami, but are inedible and toxic to humans. The large bell-shaped flowers secrete an enticing perfume at night that attracts pollinating bats. In its natural range, the sausage tree was a popular medicinal plant and treated conditions such as constipation, wounds, sexually transmitted disease and skin cancer. Scientific studies have verified that the tree is indeed an effective anti-inflammatory, antibiotic and anti-cancer treatment. The South American Rain Tree Our rain tree is over 100 years old and carries the scars of several cyclones. The rain tree comes from the northern South American rainforests where their seed pods are sought after by children for the sticky, sweet pulp that occurs between the seeds. There are several reasons why this plant is called a rain tree. The leaves curl up on cloudy, rainy days. The grass is often greener under the tree than that which surrounds it. Sap-sucking insects can produce a fine drizzle of honeydew that can drip on you. And flower petals fall like rain during peak flowering periods. Look up and look down. Is the grass greener? Is there a pretense of rain from falling petals? Or maybe you have to wait for a rainy day to watch the leaves curl. The Blue Quandong This large, fast-growing tree is a common sight in our local rainforests. It is easily identified amongst the forest greenery with its metallic blue fruit, bright red discarded leaves and giant buttresses. Although it carries the same common name as the southern Quandong tree, the two are not closely related. The fruit of the blue Quandong cannot be eaten unless really ripe and even then is not especially palatable. Cassowaries, however, relish the fruit, as do fruit pigeons and other rainforest-dwelling animals. Cassowaries can travel up to a kilometre before dispensing undigested seeds of the blue Quandong, ensuring that the trees are spread far and wide. Spices that shaped the world Spices did indeed shape the world. For example, dried flower buds of the clove tree were once worth more than their weight in gold. There are several members of the ginger family here, including ginger itself, galangal and turmeric, whose fleshy rhizome roots are used in cooking, and cardamom, whose seeds are used as a spice. See if you can identify the three types of pepper we have growing here. Black pepper is the most widely used spice in the world. However, the other two species are quite popular 
for reasons other than enhancing the flavour of food. Beetle pepper is grown in Southeast Asia and New Guinea, where it is used to enhance the effect of beetle nut chewing. The leaves of the beetle pepper are used to roll a quid, which is made with a thin sliver of beetle nut, which is the nut of a palm, and lime. The combination produces a thick red liquid along with a feeling of well-being when chewed. This euphoric feeling is behind the popularity of our third pepper, the kava pepper. Kava is grown throughout Melanesia and Polynesia where it is both a ceremonial and social drink. Traditionally, the drink was made by chewing the root of the kava pepper and spitting the juice into a bowl. These days, it's made by crushing the roots with water. Another vine growing here is vanilla. Although a climber, vanilla is an orchid. The Mexican plant depends upon native bees for pollination, so when grown elsewhere, it must be hand-pollinated. The entire process of producing vanilla is extremely labour-intensive, resulting in high prices for each pod. <coughs> Rainforest Gully Lookout From this elevated position, you can see into the gully that frames our ephemeral creek. Can you spot several tall, scaly tree ferns? The trunks of these statuesque ferns are unusual, as they are composed of old frond bases and root fibres. When grown in a protected position, they can reach a height of 15 metres. Of the smaller ferns in the gully, the strap-leaved bird's nest ferns are the most obvious. These ferns are usually epiphytic, meaning that they grow on other plants while not actually taking any nutrient from them. Most of the climbers that you can see growing up the trees in the gully are aroids. You might spy some popular pot plant species here, such as the green and gold leaves of the devil's ivy. Are you surprised to see how big it can grow when left in its natural rainforest habitat? The Cannonball Tree What a curious but apt name for this strange rainforest tree. It produces large scented flowers and spherical fruit. Scientists believe the tree is bat pollinated, although the flower lacks nectar, which is usually the reason for an animal to be attracted. Once ripe, the tops of the fruits fall off, exposing hundreds of seeds, so beware of falling cannonballs. The tree is recognised as being native to the Amazon. However, it has also grown in India for at least 3,000 years, which is on the other side of the world. It is still unknown whether this is a second natural location for the tree or whether it was somehow introduced there. The Seychelles Stilt Palm This remarkable palm is extremely popular. With its undivided leaves, spiny trunk and stilt roots, it is very attractive and easy to identify. Although it is a tropical palm, it has been grown successfully as far south as the mid-north coast of New South Wales. Only a few palms produce stilt roots like this that grow from the lower trunk into the ground. Those that do tend to be taller and have larger crowns for a given trunk diameter than other palms with more normal root systems. There are several theories for the spiny trunk. The most probable is that it is an adaptation to deter foraging primates. The local primates are notorious for removing unripened fruits, which prevents mature seeds from being dispersed. The spiny trunk ensures the fruit is fully ripened before falling and becoming a primate's meal. <coughs> Gingers, Heliconias and Back Scratchers These three colourful tropical residents are closely related and are grown for their showy inflorescences. An inflorescence is where the flowers form part of a compound structure. However, in many cases, it is the colourful fleshy bracts that stand out. Bracts are modified leaves that surround flowers either for the protection of the flower or to advertise the flower's presence to pollinators. The ginger family is widespread across the tropical regions of the world, with the greatest diversity occurring in Southeast Asia. Gingers are grown for their flavoursome roots, 
spectacular inflorescences and aroma. Members of this family include beehive, torch and Thai gingers. It is not only their fleshy roots and spicy seeds that are used to flavour food. The flower buds of the torch ginger are widely used in Southeast Asia to flavour seafood and vegetable dishes. Heliconias have particularly showy bracts. The plants, however, lack the aromatics found in the gingers. For a long time, the heliconias were placed in the banana family, Musaceae, and only recently given their own family. They are grown for their floral display, and there are several species in the garden, ensuring some are in flower at all times of the year. The back scratcher gingers occur in New Guinea, Indonesia, Australia and the Solomon Islands. They are a small group of only 16 species, most of which come from New Guinea. As you walk around the gardens, you will see several plantings of our local back scratcher ginger, Tapinakilos and Anase. The tar tree. Beware of this tree. It is one of our natives and is common in our local forests. Its name is a reminder of why we should keep our distance. The tree produces a black corrosive sap that is so strong it can remove paint from cars or chrome from metal and can cause severe skin reactions in some people. In fact, touching any part of this tree can cause ulcerations and blisters. The fruit of the tar tree is very similar in appearance to its close relative, the cashew. Both nuts need roasting to render them edible. Despite the risks, the local Aboriginal people used to collect the fruit, remove the nuts and roast them before enjoying a delicious meal. Three powerful palms. These three palms are very important to the local inhabitants of their native countries. On the right is the Buriti palm. It comes from the Amazon and central Brazil. The Buriti is the most common and widely used palm in Brazil. Each palm is capable of producing around 5,000 edible fruits a year, which can be juiced to make a sweet drink or fermented to make palm wine. The leaves are used to thatch houses. The next in line is the Caroline Ivory Nut Palm. The seeds of this palm have similar texture to ivory, and are used as an ivory substitute for small carvings. The trunk is also a source of sago, an important starch in the diet of the South Sea Islanders. Lastly is the Salaka palm, a native of Southeast Asia. This spiky palm produces the delicious scale-covered Salaka fruit. Timor Black Bamboo Bamboo is the tallest grass in the world. As a general rule, tropical bamboos tend to grow in tight clumps, whereas cooler climate species spread. They all grow by rhizome, which are underground runners. Timor black bamboo is a large tropical clumping bamboo that can reach heights of over 20 metres. It produces a black lustrous timber. In Southeast Asia, bamboo is probably the most important of all plants because it is the most useful. It is used for construction scaffolding, fencing and cord made from thin strips of bamboo. It is also used in the manufacture of boats, furniture and tools. Pandas eat it and so do we, as bamboo shoots. We hope you have enjoyed your botanic wander. This completes your Flecker Garden Walk. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about what makes our habitat unique and worth conserving. There's more to explore, such as the Rainforest Boardwalk or the Freshwater and Saltwater Lakes. There's plenty more to learn at the Cairns Botanic Gardens Visitor Centre. You can wander down to the Tanks Art Centre to see what's on and don't forget the monthly Sunday markets. If you are continuing on, stop for a well-earned coffee break at the cafe before you continue exploring. Or, if you are leaving us here, thank you for visiting our beautiful gardens and we hope to welcome you back again soon.